I did it. I made a crocodile. It's ridiculous how pleased I am about this. Oh. If you've been following along with this channel over the past couple of months, I have chatted on a number of occasions about how I really want to crochet some reptiles because I have a lot of reptiles and I really like them. But the shapes that are required for making a reptile like reptile are so different to the standard sort of mammalian shapes that we make normally for a Megurumi. And I didn't want to make cutesy, toy, stuffy, plushy, blob reptile. I wanted to make a reptile reptile. It's so funny sometimes it takes a lot of courage to try something. And that's a weird thing to say when you're a person who's been designing crochet toy patterns for a decade. But I am not a person that is great at stepping outside of my comfort zone. And I also don't like getting things wrong, which is not a great combination when you're trying something new. But I had a bit of a difficult week last week. And I was like, right, okay, so don't get stuck in a fog, do a thing, push yourself a bit. And so I went to the local hobby store and I bought four different kinds of green yarn, came home and started this little guy. About halfway through him, I, I nearly despaired and frogged the whole thing, which is unraveled it. But I kept going and I'm really pleased that I did because whilst this is not my perfect reptile yet. I think it's a really, really good first one and I'm totally gonna share the pattern with you. By the time this comes out, I will hopefully have written it up. It'll be linked below. If not, I'll have a general link to my patterns page on the website and it'll appear there in the next couple of days. But I'm actually really pleased with how this went and I wanted to talk you through a bit more detail than I normally give in these little introduction to my new pattern videos because it was interesting. It was a bit of a learning curve for me. So when we make a Megurumi, it's all about shapes, at least when I design toys. So I look at the animal that I want to make and I imagine all the different shapes that comprise it and normally it's an awful lot of circles and ovals and then I compile those shapes out of crochet. But for something like a crocodilian, it doesn't follow those normal lines. So I had to look at it in different aspects. And the first thing that I had to decide was how I wanted to make the shapes of the face. And something went a little bit wrong along the way. And, and I'll chat to you about that. You're, you're gonna construct yours slightly different to how I constructed this one, but I'll put how I should have done it in the pattern, don't worry. It'll all be fine. But so first, I wanted to give this ridge above his eyes. I'm not sure if that's focusing terribly well. I'll use B-roll if it's not. So I wanted to give this ridge that um, where the eyes sit, but I didn't just want to do that out of separate pieces. I, I wanted to nod towards it within the design. So I did a partial increase, which is very standard for a Megurumi. And then I decreased back down to the neck here. And um, I'll, do you know, I'll pop some of my photos as I went along in this so you can see what the shapes look like as they built up. Um, I then wanted to have a more pronounced back ridge for the plates that go along the spine. And then I needed to have a narrowed tail because the tail of a crocodile is for steering when swimming. So it's not just, again, it's not just this sort of long oval, it's got this shape to it. So what I had to do was variously go up here and down there, and then along in a normal standard increase, and then raise the top up there, and then pinch it back in again to allow me to narrow those sides but have a bit more height on top, which was really fun. And I'll, um, I'll obviously, as I said, I'll link the pattern so you can do that for yourself. But what I then did was I defined some of the larger plates that go on top, of the crocodile as they go along here, these big sort of scales that stick up. And I just did that with surface crocheting. So I used, I think it was a millimeter smaller of a hook and I worked into the stitches on the top. And now I did this by eye, but I'm gonna count this up for you so that you can see exactly where I put them if you're not such a fan of doing things like that by eye. Some of us aren't and that's absolutely fine. I then realized two things. I hadn't stuffed it and I also hadn't put the eyes in. So 
stuffing a shape like this should be done as you go. So you're gonna put a bit of stuffing in every few rounds because what you've got is these very narrow tapered bits and to get the stuffing through, what I had to do, and in fact my four-year-old son helped me, he ripped off loads of tiny, tiny bits of stuffing from the wad and I got a long, thin crochet hook and poked them down as he passed them to me. It worked fine retrospectively, but the major issue, um, if this was to be played with rather than used as a decorative item, is that I didn't attach the safety eyes till afterwards. What you'll need to do is attach them at about that point of the neck. Don't worry, I'll mark it in the pattern again. But you're meant to push the safety eyes in and then push the backing onto the back. And so these safety eyes are just pushed in with no backing whatsoever. I might attach them with a little bit of fabric glue at some point to make them more secure. But also I think I actually will do what I don't do terribly often and I'm gonna make another one because I'm gonna make an alligator. So I'm gonna make it very similarly but with some um, anatomical differences to define the difference between the two and I think I'll do it in a slightly darker shade as well. I um, added the lower jaw in simply by spiralling from a magic circle, flattening it so unstuffed and then sewing that to the bottom but with some half a round of single crochets building up this neck part so that I could attach it under the chin and within the mouth. I then got a tiny scrap of white yarn and just hand sewed these little teeth around there. These eye ridges here, they're made from uh, half a magic circle and by half a magic circle I mean I made a magic loop, I put six single crochets into it, I tightened it but I did not close the loop as a circle, I left it open as more of a semicircle shape and I tied in both ends there. And there's a final detail that I'm not sure is going to show up magnificently on here but I made little marks here with the same dark green I used for the ridges on the back and for the eyes into the little feet as toes and I marked the nostrils in the same way as well. This took me longer to design than anything else I've made in a really long time. But I'm so glad that I did it. I, I, sometimes you just have to make the first step into something to know that of course this is a thing that I can do. And that's what happens here. I've, it's now given me the confidence that of course I can make these different shapes. They're all shapes that I make for other things. But the, the self-imposed pressure was a bit ridiculous. Uh, the final part of the toy that I should mention is that I decided instead of stuffing the legs to make them poseable, and this is something that I've done in my tarantula and scorpion patterns before, and in the trunk of my elephant, and what I do is just get some pipe cleaners that my kids use for crafts, bend them up to the right size, try and hide that little bit of a prickly end, and I put them within the legs, and then you can make them have this nice little um, little crocodile pose there as well. I used DK yarn for this. I don't use um, yarn that small for a lot of my toys, but I went with a double knit yarn, so a light yarn. And um, I think it was a three and a half millimeter crochet hook for most of it. And then it was either a three or a two and a half for the surface crochet, but I'll note that, I'll note that in the pattern for you there. And then yeah, just a tiny scrap of yarn for the teeth and the safety eyes are six millimeter safety eyes and um, oh finally when I was um, sewing the bits together at the end and if you need help with sewing I've got a video there um, I just completed that surface crochet end by weaving round and round to sort of finish off the tail as well just to give it a really defined look but there you go it's I was gonna say it's the first time I've crocheted a reptile. I've crocheted a turtle and a tortoise, but come on. I mean, different stuff, right? But yeah, I really hope you like it. I can't wait to hear what you think. And you can find the full pattern for free. All my patterns are free. They always will be on the Lucy Kate Crochet website. And let's chat in the comments section. I'll see you there.